So I was ruminating on that and I still felt like there was a piece that was missing. And for some reason I woke up this morning and it just clicked for me. Like I wasn't thinking about this at all. It is day four of this retreat. It's day four. We're on an island, and part of me never wants to leave it. Part of me is excited to hit the energy and lessons and um, strength and clarity of vision that I've gained short days back home with me and immediately just start. I feel so refreshed. I feel everything that this this retreat was supposed to accomplish. I feel like I'm settling into a new version of myself and that's That's welcome. <laughs> That's what I'm feeling right now. I had every intention in my typical Leo way to come out, document, make sure I was, you know, getting content, blah, 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 blah this and that got swiftly abandoned day one because I was like oh this is an experience experience and I think even in the way that the organizer has not um, experienced before I think there is a magic in how all of us showed up here right now the places we hold for each other Lana ever sees this, wow, you are, I'm forever grateful that you were called to bring us all together. It was a big thing I've been feeling, I would say from the past two years probably, is this societally placed urgency around being 
now in my 30s. And in comparison to, I would say over half of the women here, I'm probably I'm probably one of the youngest actually. Um, like we haven't really gone around to like say ages, but I think I'm on the younger side of things. And that, and, th- and not in a way that's um, was immediately obvious to me. If that makes sense. And that in itself was an eye opener. I was like, oh wow, I have so much life to live. (laughs) I have so much life to live still. And I'm still so early in my journey. For some reason I was feeling already pretty well trotted into the journey or like starting to fall into that trap of feeling like I was running out of time to do some of the things I want to do. I want to direct, I want to write stories, right, screenplays that I will direct. I want to, you know, I have all these fantastical thoughts for books and exhibitions and street art. And I was starting, I went into this journey kind of honestly being like, which one am I going to do? Like, <laughs> when am I going to focus on maybe at the end of this retreat, I'll know what I can like grind into and focus on and I'll have some big fantastical vision about what specific thing and I'm like no so it's roots restore and reimagine roots 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 and one thing I brought with me is um, I'm doing another sketchbook project which I don't even know if I talked about the one I did last time on my channel. But I'm doing another sketchbook project. <laughs> and sketchbook project, as in someone has a sketchbook that travels to different artists and they then take said book, reproduce it, it becomes like a book for people to um, buy. For me, the powerful thing has been just looking at what different artists have done within the book. Some incredible work that I feel like the rules are to not show it publicly, so I'm not going to. But I have two pages. It's a, it's a two pages project. This is the Minneapolis edition. Um, and yeah, there are other artists in here that I'm like, oh, I've never heard of you but I need to connect with you. They were just growing in my backyard. One of the things I learned at the retreat was how to make flower essences from a now new friend named Rowan, who's an indigenous medicine person and herbalist and healer. And yeah, forever grateful to them for teaching us how to ethically make flower essences biggest thing is asking for permission so this is actually the second batch I made and the first one I feel like I was just excited to go in my backyard and pick them and so I just went in my backyard and picked them even though they were looking really sad and like I was trying I only picked like two or three um and it's just like the essence I was getting from it was just like coming across as sad so I just went and repicked them today because they looked happier today. And a lot of them were like, it literally felt like they were looking shopping. And they're like, yeah, I'm ready to pick. Come on. <laughs> so that's who is in here right now. Thank y'all very much. Footage of this, but I went to Art of World 
Iron World is basically Minneapolis's biggest art festival. It's in Northeast, which is the art district of Minneapolis. And yeah, it was interesting to go back because it's been on pause for two years. Um, a lot of it is like going through artist studios and stuff. So obviously it's been shut down because of COVID. And so it was kind of cool to go back. And this was like one of my favorite things to do in the city pretty much since I've moved here and always like a big highlight of the year for me. And yeah, it was fun, but it also didn't feel quite the same for me anymore. And that is hinting at further future decisions. So I picked up this dish, this bowl. Um, I should have, I think I have the card from the creator. I'll link who the creator is um, below. But isn't this so cute? And she had matching sets of like, well, they didn't come as sets, but they, she had like a matching cup that I now regret not buying <laughs> because I came back to the table and it was gone already. But I bought that little dish. I always love a little dish. I also bought, um, affirmation cards from the melanated remedy and a lot of the cards are look like this they're really well designed I also bought these um, incense from her surrender was calling to me for some reason the song by Janae Aiko surrender has been stuck in my head kind of on the loop for the past few weeks so I was like okay let me buy the surrender excuse me let me go to where the cards are my now growing stack of oracle decks and cards and tarot um but yeah this is the deck it's beautifully made beautifully created i definitely want to connect with her um especially since i'm a person who has always thought about illustrating my own affirmation deck it's like why do it alone i think there's something powerful about collaborating and I'm out of the season of feeling like I need to be everything alone. Abundance just fell out, so let me go ahead and abundance. Take a moment to notice the energy flowing in your body. Then take it a bit further and notice the energy surrounding you. How far does it reach? The world is full of infinite possibilities, your gifts, manifestation opportunities, and blessings. I'm going to carry this card with me today. I pulled one earlier that was um, Promises, which is felt like a similar thing. Hi, Pat. Say hi to the people. Oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi, people. <laughs> I don't know if I should let this book look at. This is the... Which one is she? Um... No, it's not Aries. Oh my gosh, no, it's Sagittarius. No, it's Pisces. Duh. Oh my god. This is Pisces. Um, which is my moon sign. And I love Pisces people. And so this is from Aramis, the artist. If y'all follow my channel, y'all definitely should be watching hers. sounds it makes just feel so like intrinsic to my soul and I just love playing with it. Oh okay that's enough thing. I'm so excited because the air signs from Air Mr. Artist have arrived. I'm an air sign. I love air signs. She's an air sign too. She's a Gemini. 
So um, I bought all three because I just have now taken to whenever the new rollouts happen, buying prints for whoever I feel like aligns with them. So I bought one for Gemini friend Nicole, one for Aquarius friend Tracy, and then Libra ones for me. Well, yeah, this is Gemini. It's so beautiful that I really want to, I kind of want to keep it, but I'm not going to. <laughs> um, yeah, this is Gemini. It's the quality. The quality, they look, the quality in her prints almost look like she painted on this paper directly. Like just the texture and the way it feels. Like that's how well these are printed. And for my prints, I'm thinking about contacting the same person that did hers because they're just, you know, unmatched. And here we got the Libra Queen. I'm so in love with it. I'm in love with the justice or like the, uh, I'm in love with the scale, holding up crystal, like two halves of a crystal. Like all of it, all of it, all of it. The clouds and background. It's all so gorgeous. Like if y'all follow me on the channel, y'all definitely should be following and then we got Aquarius and she's pouring, you know, the water down. Beautiful. So I'm gonna try to come over and Tracy to get this one. I know she just moved into a, her new apartment and she's looking for more art to have in there. So it's gonna be perfect for her. And it's like her vibe, like she wants like this sensual romantic vibe in her apartment. So it's gonna be perfect.
dick. I can get it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you need a stick? some new supplies one color pencil eraser hopefully this helps you know helps me erase whatever mistakes I do not want sometimes I want mistakes because I can work with mistakes but sometimes I'd be like oh no undo where's my undo button I also got more prisma colors I found myself really frustrated trying to use. I also got this Prismacolor for portraits. Um, I really want to get into just using color pencils, more sketching, more doing sketches before starting the, doing more in detail sketches um, or studies. Studies is what my art school used to call them. Like when they basically are damn near pieces of art themselves. Um, before getting into the making of the actual work. But I just knew I needed more shade. <laughs> I knew I needed more shades. Look at this. Child, okay. I just knew I needed more shades for, to really get the values that I want. Okay, it looks like it's like a Japanese I didn't even know that when I picked it. Honestly, I went with one that I liked the design of that felt clean and cute. Leave it to the Japanese to design the clean and cute and functional. <laughs> they are very good at that. I'm watching this other video about the day in life of Frida Kahlo and her various routines throughout her life. Obviously, her routines in life change depending on her, her mobility level, but um, as they were talking, like, a, literally an image popped into my head, and it was like, it wasn't even, it's not even a concrete image, it's more like trying to get across, like, what Frida did so well was getting across her pain, like, it just, you know, it seeps out of her work, and... For some reason that led me less to like an emotion but more to like what if I try to capture what is like in my mind <laughs> like one given second or moment especially as a person with ADHD like I think I sometimes find it hard to explain that like for every sentence that I have come out my mouth I have like 20 other ones already formulating in my head or for every one thing I'm doing, I'm constantly thinking about, yeah, a bunch of other things. the portrait over here <laughs> makes me weak. <laughs> like, why is, why is he making that face? <laughs>
been my go-to every day. I try to play the Columba. And pull a card from this deck I just bought. I don't remember. I don't know if I've already pre-recorded this or talked about this in this same video. But yeah, it's the Remedy deck. Melanated Affirmation deck. I keep pulling the same card. I just, sorry, I just paused because I pulled the same card. And I think it's just, it's like bring it true small world card you are the creator of your world you get to determine who slash what you believe in who you want in your life and who you want to be and then there's like it's i love that each card has the plug aka something to take away from it so the plug write down or imagine an experience that may seem far from you example my world is huge and i'm excited to explore all it has in store for me get this deck um i'm definitely going to link it so i'm hopping on as an ender or closer for this video i know again this is another vlog that's all over the place and that's fine and i ended the last vlog talking about starting a patreon and i'm now ending this one saying that i've actually rethought that <laughs> um i've actually rethought that and a lot of it has to do with actually that with that card like just really thinking about what I want moving forward and what actually I am capable of and being realistic with that too and so one aspect of that is realizing that if I'm going to have a patreon I'm going to need a team in order for it to not be a stress on me I already struggle with maintaining what I'm maintaining and still putting out content on this channel at a rate um, that's viable. And so if even the structuring of doing the legwork in the background for setting up a Patreon was tough for me, maintaining one in a way that I would want to would be even tougher. And so that comes down to just having a team. Like honestly, I need to have an assistant and eventually one day having someone to assist me with the actual creative output of my design studio and or my illustration studio. So those things are not set up yet. So I don't have any business in Patreon yet. And I think I was just leaning into the pressure of what everybody, not everybody, but what a lot of people are saying you should be doing right now in this creator, in this creator economy. Part of that was again me feeling like I will have a certain freedom with a Patreon that I don't have with this channel or even um, with my social media but part of me is like do I just need to divorce myself in general of that like take the steps of you know take the steps of finding my comfort zone in the spaces that I currently have versus trying to craft yet another space to create in especially while I know it has the potential to turn into another big responsibility. But also, another aspect of this is a realization and a clarification on what I want the next body of work and paintings I'm working on to focus on. And I have been thinking about pondering this idea of adoptification when it comes to black girls. It was definitely inspired by my niece, Shayla. Shout out to Shayla. I don't think she watches these vlogs, but if she does, hi, Denise. Um, we were having a discussion, and she was just ranting about the fact that her brother, her little brother, gets to get away with doing a lot of stuff, and that she feels like a second parent. And I was just thinking through like how normalized that is, because it is, of course, my older sister is parenting her in that way because that's the way she was parented. My older sister is 10 years older and she, in a lot of ways, helped raise us. Like she, in a lot of ways, helped fill the void that us not having a direct father in the household. I had a father figure, my grandfather. He was there all the time too, but he also was always working. And so while my mother was working triple shifts and my granddad would be out working who was taking care of me in April my little sister my older sister Shay and so I 
always think about like the ways in which that trickles. I don't think that she's even had the time to sit and think about like the way that's probably factored into her parenting with Shayla. Um, and then consequently also parenting a younger child, a younger boy specifically. Because there's that phrase that I, I really wish I knew who I should probably try and look this up to quote them, but when it comes to like black American households, it often feels like black mothers parent or they raise the girls. So like they parent them, they discipline them, they make sure that they're responsible, make sure that they can learn to do things like cook and clean and all these things. But they love or nurture the boys. It's not that they don't love their daughters, but it's it's a different type of, it often is a different type of parenting. I personally, with my, my direct mother, didn't have that experience in the, because I had the benefit of having an older sister who took on that burden of basically being an adultified child. But, and so like that was one series that I was thinking about for the past few months. I have a Google Doc going that's just like ideas centered around that phrases. I remember hearing growing up people I want to interview and get their experience on what black girlhood was for them and were what were the signifiers of adultification within it. There's also societal facts to back up this, the fact that oh, young black girls are often, um, if you people ask what's their age, they're often considered older than what they are. They're treated differently within the school systems and treated more harshly and strictly within the school systems. So I was ruminating on that and I still felt like there was a piece that was missing. And for some reason I woke up this morning and it just clicked for me. Like I wasn't thinking about this at all. Last night I was thinking about sci-fi, I finished Three Body Problem. And maybe that in some weird distant way it, it clicks because I was thinking about it, that book definitely forces you to think about how we operate, how humans in general operate. And yes, there's societal difference, there's different philosophies within it. And then also what it looks like when, a, when put against the alien civilization in their circumstances, how they operate. And so maybe that's why, like I think I was just thinking very, I was thinking a lot about sci-fi, but I was also thinking a lot about like psychology and mindset and behavior. Also in my personal life, now that I am medicated, I've been thinking about the fact that while in my day-to-day -day, certain things have um, alleviated for me in terms of being able to get certain things done, the thing that still lingers in a lot of ways is the shame, especially now that I am medicated and when I still make mistakes. And so I think this next phase of me is just like unlearning the shame around it and also in learning not to take on other people's frustrations when I do make mistakes. <laughs> um, so that's been, that's still an ongoing journey. And so I think all those things were ruminating and I woke up this morning and was like, oh, yes, adultification of black girls, but what does it look like for us black girls who were neurotypical? Sorry, I'm rambling <laughs> and my camera was like, play the music on her. Long story very short, I just deep dived into the whole ADHD diagnosis. It took me talking to my friend who is also another black femme, who, black queer femme, who was diagnosed last year. Back to next phase of work, I finally had this aha moment. It's yes, adultification of black girls, but then also how does that correlate with neurodivergence in black girls? Um, and so right now I'm calling it, I feel like everything I do is like noisy, loud, something like that, like bold. And so I'm, right now I'm calling it loud minds because that's the only way I can describe how, not the only way, but that's one way I can describe what it's like dealing with ADHD. It's like your mind has about, 20 different things going on at once. It's very loud, it's very noisy. Yeah, that's that's what this is gonna focus on. And so I envision interviews, audio and visual interviews, and creating a piece out of that in itself. 
Um, but I also want to do a portrait series of each person I interview. Also, I have this vision of creating mind maps, basically, of really trying to understand how their brains work and how they envision how their brains work and can I put that onto canvas and having an exhibition of their interviews of these portraits of the artworks I create from them. I've also let go of the whole whether this channel will grow or not. If it's meant to grow, it will grow. But if it's meant to be just us 300 folks rocking with each other, then that's just what it's gonna be. And that's cool. All right, bye. <laughs>